Hi, I'm going to present you our work on MR-compatible accelerometer that we used for monitoring the tremor during MR-guided focused geocrasion treatment of essential tremor. We believe that, that those uh, accelerometer measurements could be used as early markers for tremor reduction efficacy. Uh, we used the Exablet Neuro system in, in uh, Paris as part of a clinical trial to treat essential tremor patients. In order to, uh, to, to rate the, the tremor, we can use either a clinical scale or accelerometry. Um, clinical scale is, is what is uh, most often used to rate the effect of the, the, the treatment with the exabit neural system. This is an example here from the work from uh, uh, Elias, uh, Jeff Elias at the University of Virginia, showing actually a significant reduction in the CRST score on those patients. It is also possible to uh, use accelerometers that can be attached to the patient's hand in order to, uh, to measure the trend. So we ask the patient to hold the posture and we record the, the tremor. So we record the signals coming from those accelerometers, and then we uh, extract the, the spectrum on those signals, and we compute the total power, which is the power within the, the 4 to 12 hertz band. And this provides us with the power of the tremor. Uh, here is the, 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 the treatment protocol. Uh, so the, the treatment itself with the exhibit neural system is, is done on the uh, day zero. Uh, prior to uh, the uh, the treatment is an inclusion visit, including actually the CFRT evaluation, of course, and a CT scan and an MR scan and also a, a neuro exam. Uh, we also perform uh, uh, the, the same evaluations, except for the, the CT scan, are uh, performed one day after treatment, one week, and one month after treatment. Uh, we also have three months and, and 12 months. Uh, we assess uh, the the tremor with accelerometers uh, the months before the treatment on, on day seven and also uh, one month after the treatment. The way we perform those assessments with the accelerometer is that we actually ask the, the patient to hold the posture for 30 seconds and then release the posture for 10 seconds and repeat 20 times so that actually we can average the, the signal that we have. So you see here the signals that, that we record, patient is holding posture, having some rest, holding posture again 20 times. Uh, we compute the spectrogram and we average here the, the tremor power within this bandwidth, which gives us uh, a value assisting the, the, the tremor uh, with the accelerometry. So how does it compare to the clinical score? So you see the uh, inclusion is, is our reference, and we basically see a 75% reduction uh, of the tremor uh, here with, with accelerometry. That is quite consistent with the, uh, the, the clinical score, also it's the same, same uh, reduction. Uh, how, how do they correlate each other? You, you see actually that uh, uh, both one week after treatment and one month after treatment, we see actually that uh, the, the, the reduction in tremor as measured with the accelerometers uh, um, correlates pretty well with the, uh, the, the change in the uh, CSRT uh, score uh, that was assessed by the neurologist. Same thing for, for one month after treatment. So we see that actually uh, tremor reduction with the accelerometry is a quantification of the um, uh, of the of the tremor and it correlates with the um, CRT. So this was the first result that we uh, could measure before and after treatment with accelerometers and, and quantify the, the the reduction of tremor. Uh, but we also uh, provided some some performed some measurements during treatment. So basically, here is the setup. Uh, the neurosurgeon pressed the start sonication button. For those who are familiar with the uh, Exabit Neurosystem, you know that you typically have a 30 second delay before sonication start, actually starts. And so the neurologist is asking the patient to, to hold the posture and it's sending a signal 
Once the patient holds the, the, the posture, we mark with a timestamp that the patient is ready. Thanks to the accelerometer that are tapped on each patient's hand, we uh, record actually the, the signals here uh, on a custom software that we, we developed so that we have access to the raw data of the, the tremor inside the MR of the treated hand and the non-treated hand. We record both hands so that we can measure again during the treatment, the effect of the tremor. Uh, so same thing as, as before, this is during the treatment, during sonication, you see here the raw data. Uh, we can compute uh, before the spectrogram of the hand. So you, you see it's a reduction in, in the tremor here as a function of time as we sonicate. And we are able to compute the, the tremor power as a function of time. So you see here the tremor suddenly decreasing when the, the thermal rise is uh, sufficient in order to decrease the, the tremor. Um, and here is typically the effect that we see on, 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 uh, on the treated hand. You see between here, the beginning of the sonication and the end of the sonication, we see a significant decrease in tremor here. Uh, typically here, it was an 80% decrease. Uh, and this was when we were reaching a 51 degree uh, temperature at focus. This was not enough you see, to induce a permanent effect. So uh, five minutes later, the tremor is back almost at its initial level. Again, this is before, uh, at the beginning of the sonication. At the end of the sonication, we have a significant reduction, this time 90% reduction in tremor. We reach a, quite a higher temperature, it's 59 degrees, and now the, the, even though we continue sonicating to, uh, uh, to uh, consolidate the effect, you see that the tremor is not coming back anymore. And this enables us not only to assess the efficacy of each individual treatment, but we also define a treatment efficacy indicator. Basically, this is the maximum percentage reduction during the treatment. So this is an indicator that can be provided to the neurosurgeon during the treatment. You see here the effect of the reduction of the tremor for each of the, the, the sonications that, that we achieve. And we can compute the overall uh, treatment efficacy uh, score that we, we compute actually, and this value can change depending on the, on the, uh, the, the sonication and, and the number of sonication and the total power that is administered to the patient. What is interesting is that those data, we, so we have directly access to, to this treatment efficacy score that we define during treatment. And you see that this actually score that we, uh, we see during the treatment, we can have access to in treatment correlates quite well with the tremor reduction here uh, at, at one week after treatment um, compared to the inclusion. So, so you see that, that it provides us some, some interesting data during treatment, if we should continue or not the, the treatment in, in terms of um, efficacy of, and, and long-term outcome of the patient. So to conclude, um, we, uh, in this work, we, we assess the tremor with accelerometer. We believe that this is a complementary approach to the CSRT uh, evaluation by the neurologist. And, um, we, we showed that by looking at the tremor reduction between the inclusion and control visit, so before and after treatment, um, the accelerometry that we measure correlates correlate very well with the uh, CSRT at one week and one month. Uh, we would like to, to continue this work. That this is preliminary data on seven patients. We, we would like to confirm this with a long-term outcome at three months, six months, and 12 months, and include uh, more patients. So this was before and after the treatment, but also during treatment, it provides insightful information for the medical team. We have feedback on each sonication efficacy, uh, and uh, it could help adjusting sonication time, reducing lesion size as well as needed. You see here is a good example. For example, for this patient, uh, actually the score that we calculated during treatment was pretty low. And it's true, we, we might, we could continue to treat this, uh, this patient. Uh, on, on the other hand, here you, you see 
that once the score is high enough, we could stop sonic heating. So it, it, it provides uh, interesting information to the uh, mineral surgeon. I would like, of course, to um, acknowledge our, our sponsor, the National Agency for Research in France, the Fondation Betancourt Schuller, the Focused Ultrasound Foundation, as, as our lab is the center of excellence. And this work is a collaboration between the Brain Institute, Paris, and for our lab and physical medicine, Paris. And thank you for your attention.